Hello Year 13 Chemists, welcome to TP's Chemistry Course. In this clip I cover all the necessary background to buffer solutions and then go on to derive all the formula we're going to need to do calculations of such solutions. What we're going to look at are buffers and buffers are a mixture and it's a mixture of something like a weak acid and its conjugate base. Okay, so you have, to, um, you have both the weak acid and its conjugate base, which is the same as saying a, a weak base and its conjugate acid, in effect, okay? But you have to have both of them in a significant amount. So having a weak acid and a tiny, tiny amount of its uh, conjugate base is not really considered as a buffer, because of what buffers actually do. They have to be able to carry out a particular function. And that particular function is to keep a pH of a system constant for small additions of either acid or base. And that may seem a little bit sort of specialised and maybe why we'll be looking at this, but in fact buffers occur in nature and are important industrially and uh, we have examples domestically as you'll see. Uh, and so it's a good idea to understand them because it sort of fits into this course nicely. So, for, so how do they work? And it, the answer to that is very, very simple. If we take an example, so we'll take our favourite example of uh, ethanoic acid, and we take that with the ethanoate anion, which is the conjugate base. If you add, or you have a pH, if you have your system set up with a particular pH and you've got this buffer nicely set up in that system and you've got your pH set, that's giving you a set balance of OH- relative to H3O+. That's what the pH is, yeah? If you now add a base to that, you're adding the equivalent of OH-, yeah? And so if we look at this mixture, what's the OH- going to react with? It's going to react with the weak acid. So any, for small additions, any OH minus you add will be removed by this. So the relative proportions of H3O plus and OH minus in the system stays the same, so the pH stays the same. Yeah. If we add base, so if we add acid now, if we now add acid, that was the addition of the base, if we now add uh, acid, that will react with the conjugate base. So any H3O plus we add into the system will be removed, removed so the relative proportion of H3O plus and OH minus that was there before the addition stays the same. So either by adding base or by adding acid, our pH does not change. Okay. So let's write that down. Okay. So the first thing to be aware of is we're going to set that buffer up to, be, uh, to have a particular pH. So what we're doing is we've got our set relative concentrations of H3O plus to OH minus. Okay, so if you have a very high concentration of H3O plus, you've got a very low concentration of H minus, and the combination of those two concentrations is 10 to the minus 14, as given by the auto dissociation of water. Okay, so that's now fixed for that pH, for this buffer system. So we've set it up to get that pH, and we'll see uh, later on, how we can actually adjust a buffer to give a particular pH. Right. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to add an acid or a base and see what happens. So let's start with adding So when we add an acid, what we're doing is we're adding H3O+. Now if this wasn't a buffer, by adding H3O+, plus, the concentration of H3O+, plus would go up, and so your pH would go down. But that's not the case here. So we have something that will react away this added H3O+. Plus. So as we add this, provided it's only a small amount, okay, this will react with the conjugate base. Notice it's a one-way reaction. It's a neutralisation reaction. Okay. <coughs> So the overall effect of this is that you're not changing the concentration of H3O+. Plus. As you're adding it in, it's being removed. Okay, so that's the addition of 
uh, an acid, and it's similar with the addition of a base. So in this case, we're adding RH minus. And this reacts with the weak acid. Okay, so what we're seeing then is that the OH minus is reacting with the weak acid. So the added OH minus, not the existing, but the added OH minus, is being removed as it's being added. And so overall, the concentration of OH minus is not changing. So if that's not changing, the pH isn't changing. So it's sufficient to be able to recognise that first of all the pH is due to the overall concentra relative concentrations of the OH minus relative to the HCO plus, which are interlinked. It's the HCO plus concentration that gives the pH. But secondly, that uh, the weak, uh, the conjugate base removes any added H3O plus, and you should be able to write an equation for that given what your buffer is. And the uh, weak acid removes any added OH minus. And it's really important, I've said it about four or five times now, it's only for a small addition of acid or base. Now you will always be given a Ka. Any problem, you'll get a Ka or a pKa. Okay. So how do we calculate the pH of a buffer? Right, now what I've done is I've just put up the... Uh, dissociation uh, reaction for any generalised weak acid, HA. You're probably thinking, but we're looking at buffers now, which is a mixture. Bear with me. So, this is a straightforward thing. You should all feel quite comfortable with this, and you should all be able to just quickly write out the acid dissociation constant for that generalised acid. Now, when we look at this equation, it's great, because what it's got is the concentration of the conjugate base and the concentration of the acid. You're given here, this is what's related to the pH, and something that you are able to look up in a data book somewhere. So this is actually all you need to be able to do a calculation of a buffer. So it doesn't matter that we're looking at the dissociation of an acid in water and there's no buffer there it's actually the equation, this equation here, or this formula here, that relates the two, uh, the weak acid and its conjugate base, to the pH. So what I need to do with this, if I'm looking at pH of a buffer, is to have the concentration of H3O plus on the left-hand side, because we always put the thing we're trying to calculate in a mathematical formula on the left-hand side, and everything else that we can measure potentially is on the other side. Okay, so this actually rearranges very straightforwardly uh, to concentration of H3O plus is equal to Ka times the concentration of HA divided by the concentration of A minus. Now I've done it like that. You could actually put the whole thing over. It doesn't matter because it shows you it's a ratio of the two, and this is where the buffer bit comes in. Yeah? Now, I would actually use this equation as is to work out the pH of a buffer, but this year, in their wisdom, NZQA are giving you all these extra formula, and there is another formula that will be on that uh, sheet which I'll show you how to get from this. And it's generally used by some people because they memorise this formula, because it's nice and simple, but they don't understand where it's come from, and it's for doing the pH of a buffer. If I want to calculate the pH, how do I do it using that? Minus the log, isn't it? So why don't I take minus the log of that and minus the log of this? Yeah? So, minus the log of H3O plus... is equal to minus log of Ka times HA over A minus. If you 
multiplying two numbers together, what do you do with the locks? You add them. So what this becomes, this is why I don't like doing this, because people go, where, where did that come from? And it's just simple maths, and it really is simple maths by the time you're year 13. So, minus the log of So it's minus the log of Ka. Okay. And then you've got plus minus the log of that. Yeah? Because you have that. So it's minus log of Ha over A minus. And you think, why is he going to all that trouble? Why am I going to all that trouble? What's that? <coughs> yeah. What's that? So, some people like this. The only problem is, is that you've got to be very careful getting the right signs and so on. If you stick with this, you won't make any mistakes, because you can just plug in the numbers and then take the minus the log of the thing you've calculated at the end. Yeah? So, but this does show something rather nicely. Okay. Okay. So, we need to think about... We've got a problem in front of us. It involves having a buffer... We need to get the best possible buffer we can for that situation. In other words, the most efficient buffer. Which is the most efficient? We want something to keep a pH for small additions of acid or base. What would be the most efficient buffer considered in terms of the concentrations of the weak acid and the weak base? What would be the best thing to have? The most efficient buffer you can have it's basically a 50-50 ratio, where the two concentrations are exactly the same. Yeah? So you could effectively hold the pH for a small addition of acid and for a small addition of base. If you've got mostly acid and a small amount of base, and suddenly the pH goes down, you've only got a small amount of base with which to counteract that added acid. So it's not going to be particularly efficient for addition of acid. So if you want it to be efficient for both acid and base, the best possible scenario is to have an equal concentration of the two. Yeah? So let's write that down, shall we? Okay, so in other words, the... Now, we are going to uh, challenge your maths again. If the concentration of HA and A minus is the same, what happens to this term here? HA and A is the same. What does it become? One. One. What's the log of one? Ten. Zero. Zero. <laughs> So, for our most efficient buffer, where we've got equal concentrations of uh, acid, weak acid in its conjugate base, the pH of that buffer is equal to the pKa of the weak acid.
So if you know what the Ka value is, then you know what the pH of the most efficient buffer is going to be, because you can calculate the pKa and it's equal to that. And this is actually a very important... So that means that. Okay, so, and that's an important point when we come to look at a uh, titration curve. It's a very simple point to identify on a titration curve. Uh, the equation we're going to use is this one. Okay. And this one can also lead you to that expression there, because if you've got these two concentrations equal to each other, this becomes 1, so you get H3O plus concentration is equal to Ka, and then when you take minus the log of the two, you just get pH is equal to pKa. Okay?